Welcome back to another episode of American Circus. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at how Americans think about romance and relationships, predominantly marriage. So, without further ado, let's get started. Of the way you refer to the opposite gender kind of says more about you. Like if you're the one saying men are trash, men are trash, it mm. says more about you. Mm. Same thing with guys that say women are whores, women are whores. It's like the same. Yeah. 70% of divorces are initiated by women, but as a couples therapist, I've never seen one divorce where the husband didn't have attachment issues. What do attachment issues look like in a couple? One thing that I see a lot is trying to earn approval by doing various things. So women with attachment issues use sex with their partner to try to get approval and love from that partner. Sex becomes almost a performative act where she's more focused on making sure he's having the time of his life instead of her having a mutual shared experience with him. As far as men, it's built on getting approval and specifically sexual approval. It's how can I get my wife to have sex with me? He may do 10 nice things for her and he expects expects her to respond with and be so thrilled that he did the dishes and walked the dog and took care of the kids that she is going to suddenly become spontaneously aroused and leap on him like a jungle predator. And when she doesn't, <laughs> when she's just happy, like, hey, cool, you're holding on the fort. You're being a great partner. That's wonderful. He gets angry. He gets set, passive aggressive. He says, why isn't she meeting my needs? Doesn't she care about me? What we see is when women want something changed, they go into the streets, they lobby together. They're very vocal men show through their actions so if we look at marriage mm -hmm. a lot of men are saying okay you know what because of the way the laws are right now they're not in the street saying change the laws they're like i just want to get married marriage is a very complicated subject and i have not been married so i won't say too much about it but i think it's curious that from 1990 to 2020 the marriage rate has cut in half i wonder what that means for our society moving forward how can you say that radical feminism cause divorces and also ignore the fact that possibly it was just that women became able to be independent therefore they started to divorce because they would be becoming economically independent in the same period as they were getting married meaning that these aren't 20-year marriages that are breaking up these are like five-year marriages that are breaking up which suggests to me a mental shift that's taken place in the nature of how we think about marriage rather than socioeconomic status being the indicator. I suppose that economics could tie into this, except for the fact that people who are higher income tend to stay married more often than people who are lower income, right? So that, that sort of undercuts the argument a little bit. Meaning that if, if, you're, if you're richer, you tend to be married longer on average. People who are poorer tend to get divorced Where more Where did you often. get that uh, statistical The Census trend. Bureau. For women, I feel like y'all have it easier because women have to be attractive. Y'all don't. You could be a two out of 10, but be rich. What? Yo, y'all wanna know why most men don't wanna get married? Because y'all can't afford to? Duh. I know so many dudes that are like, I want a traditional marriage. My wife should be submissive to me. What is she submitting to? Poverty? These dudes have no house, no car, no savings, but expect their partners to do all the cooking, the cleaning, the child rearing, because that's how it went in the 1950s. You know what else happened in the 1950s? Men were supporting entire families on one salary. They were paying for the house by themselves, putting food on the table, paying for vacations, kids, clothes, everything. And listen, I'm not trying to shame modern day men. The cost of living, education, and buying a home has dramatically outpaced wages. It's not their fault. But 53% of households are now dual income, meaning they need two partners to provide financially for the numbers to work. That means both partners need to contribute at home too. You can't ask your working girlfriend for stay at home wifey privileges if you can't afford that lifestyle. Oh. <laughs> okay. I find it curious that some people think it's easy to become wealthy in America. While there are many opportunities to earn a good wage in America, earning wealth takes a lot of time. It's not something that happens easily. However, I can understand why a woman might use a man's socioeconomic status as a way of gauging whether or not to be with him. I think Marilyn Monroe said it best when she said, Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? You wouldn't marry a girl just because she's pretty, but my goodness, doesn't it help? There is not a female on the planet who's invisible today. You can be a four, overweight, fat, you'll still go to the club and get attention. 99% of the men go to the club and nobody even fucking talks to them. If they try and talk to a girl, they get blanked and ignored and told to f most men are absolutely and utterly invisible. This is the truth about masculinity, right? It's very easy for women to sit here and complain about the top 2% of men because I dealt with well, this guy, he's arrogant, blah, 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 blah. Most men don't even f***ing exist. They send 10,000 DMs and never even get read, let alone replied to. 
There are certainly many reasons for the tension between men and women in America. But I hope that there could be some sort of resolution that comes up in the future. After all, it's healthy marriages and families that are a staple in healthy nations and communities. <laughs>